my name is Steve Bonseca and just a little bit ago I concluded my college application journey. I applied to a total of 19 schools. It was 13 in the US, 5 in the UK and 2 in the Netherlands. Um, I'm still undecided on where I'm going to go but I'll be announcing where I'll go soon. However, I did want to make this video to sort of give you an idea of what worked for me, what potentially you could be doing if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or even senior uh, at the time of watching to improve your chances. Obviously it's subjective uh, to each person. However, it did really help me over the course of high school to be able to see, oh, okay, perhaps that's a good strategy. I could pursue this type of research opportunity or perhaps I should focus more on my startup. This worked really well for this person and I've seen this pattern, etc. So compare and contrast with other videos, uh, you know, the classic how I got into the Ivy League video, or how I got into Stanford, MIT, all these videos, they're great. However, you must remember that it is subjective and it really depends on the person and it's very much circumstantial. So quick background about me. I'm Italian by origin. I also have a dual citizenship, uh, the Costa Rican citizenship. So uh, obviously I applied as an international applicant to the US schools, to the UK schools, and to the Netherlands schools. But I'm gonna be focusing mostly on the US schools in this video. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff. Standardized testing. So in terms of testing, I took the PSAT in October of my junior year. I scored a 1250, a 650 in reading and writing, a 600 in math. So obviously I didn't qualify for National Merit Scholar or anything like that. However, I believe that's only for US citizens anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But yeah, didn't do as well as I would have liked on the PSAT. So I studied a decent amount, not too much because of IB, which I'll get into later. And the IB diploma takes a long time. If you take it, you know. And so couldn't focus on the SAT as much. However, on May 6th, 2023, so in May of my junior year, I took again, uh, in May of my junior year, I took the SAT, the actual SAT for the first time, and it scored a 1470. I got a 770 reading writing and a 700 in math. And so I was decently happy, especially for it being my first SAT, right? Because the PSAT doesn't even count and you don't send it. And so I took it again in June, a month later, uh, hoping to improve. This was the June finishing junior year. So going into senior year and kind of went down uh, to a 1410. So by 60 points to a 720 reading, writing 690 math. And that wasn't good for me because I wanted to do engineering and I still do. And so studied over the course of the summer uh, focused a lot on the math section and on August 26, 2023, I took it for the third time. I got a 1480, so still couldn't crack the 1500 barrier. It's not like it was that important, uh, but I did want to crack it. I got 740, 740, but then on December 2nd, 2023, I finally achieved what I wanted, which was to have that really high math score, especially for engineering as an international need based applicant. It was very important to me to be able to stand out, at least in that regard. Standardized testing is not everything and take it with a grain of salt. However, it does help if you are close to the perfect score. I got a 1540, 750 reading, writing, 790 math. And so now my super score, which is the highest, you take the highest section score of any individual test. So your highest math, your highest reading, writing, combine it, and that's your super score. My super score was now a 1560, so 790 math on the December 2023 SAT. So that being in my senior year, very late, the last one I could take. So that was pretty clutch on my end, if I do say so myself. Uh, and then oddly enough, the first SAT, official SAT I did for reading, it was 770, which was my best score. So the first and the last were the charm. And so 1560 was my SAT that I applied to schools with in the US. Right, so moving on to courses. In my freshman year, uh, freshman and sophomore year at my school, you couldn't really choose and do honors classes or do anything of the sort. It was mostly just the math class. You could either choose standard level or higher level. Um, I went with higher level 
However, in ninth grade, I was able to sneak into the 10th grade extended or higher level class, EL, I think they call it extended level, uh, because in eighth grade, I had taken ninth grade math, and so they let me do that. And so that's why on my courses slash transcript, it shows up as math 10 in ninth grade. Um, so that was, a, I think, a huge plus factor. And if you can do that, I would encourage that, especially if you wanna go into engineering, for example, or some sort of STEM field, try to get into these higher level math classes, especially early on, show that you're interested and voracious about learning, uh, especially before, you know, those classes are even available. I had to push for it with my school admin. Uh, it was a whole ordeal. And so try to do that sort of stuff. Even if it's not allowed initially, try to make it happen. You don't necessarily have to. It's very granular, but it's things like that that show your attitude and will to change. It could even give you something to talk about for your essays uh, about how you can still change for people who wanted to learn more about math, for example, in ninth grade. Uh, and the rest of my ninth grade classes are standard, so language and literature nine, Spanish nine. Uh, we were all required to take French, so I took French. Uh, the one other class besides math that we could choose was our elective. I chose entrepreneurship for semester one and then design in semester two. Although I believe design in semester two was required. So yes, that's how that went. And then yes, individual societies, American history nine, uh, science nine, basically my school in ninth and 10th grade, they integrate all three subjects, math, uh, physics, chemistry, and biology. So we couldn't really choose, it was just science nine. And advanced band, that was, well, I guess that's the third class we could choose. We could choose math, our elective in the first semester, and then the other musical slash art elective, I chose band uh, and advanced band because I've been doing it for a while. And then physical education was still a requirement in ninth grade, so that's what I took. So those were my ninth grade classes. It's all on a one through seven IB scale. So seven is the max. Uh, and so yeah, that's what I obtained. This is a small conversion to uh, zero to 100 slash the A through F grading system in America. It's rough. It's not exact. The IB doesn't really do that, but that's how you can interpret them. So moving on to 10th grade. In 10th grade, it was much of the same. You can only choose a few classes. There's the core, I won't go over those. The ones I chose were Advanced Entrepreneurship, Entrepreneurship Capstone, which was basically a personal project. You could work on your startup. I just took, used it to work on my startup. Um, and then Advanced Band again. And then for my math class, now they allowed us to do pre-calculus. And so I did that, which was the highest level we could do. It was a dual enrollment class with a local university here, the Technical University of Costa Rica, also known as TEC. Uh, and so we did that and we did four exams over the course of the year outside of school besides a normal class and those exams counted as college credits. And I highly recommend you to do this. Take the highest level courses you can, challenge yourself, show them that you are really thirsty for knowledge and pushing yourself to the limit because quite frankly, especially probably if you're watching this, you want to get into quite competitive institutions. And so you're gonna want that edge because at the end of the day, these institutions are very difficult once you're there and you need to show them that you can manage the workload effectively. And so do things like that. And so after grade 10, I started the IB program in grade 11. And basically my 11th and 12th grade classes are the same. It's the six core IB diploma courses. And then we take TOK, which is theory of knowledge. Um, and yes, that basically rounds everything out. And so these are my grades for 11th grade. I got a seven in every class as my final grade, which is the max in IB. And these were my predicted grades for uh, the May 2024 exams, which I'm about to sit next month for IB. These were the predicted grades I used to apply to college as well. I got a predicted 45, essentially. It's seriously not necessary that you get a 45. You know, do your best that you can. I've seen people get into Harvard and Princeton and Cambridge with a 37. So seriously, it doesn't even matter. It depends what school you're aiming to, right? Look up the requirements, et cetera. And this goes to all programs. If you take A levels, if you're just a traditional US high school student with AP classes, or perhaps not even AP classes. If you're in Australia, India, et cetera, wherever you may be, Try to excel, but at the same time, don't fix it on the numbers. Just try to do the best you can, and perhaps most importantly, focus on 
course rigor. So those were classes. Moving on, let's take a look at extracurriculars. So I wanna actually read out everything on the extracurriculars. I'll put a screenshot here of what I put on Common App. Obviously there are 10 slots. On Common App Max, I used all 10, however it's not necessary. So my first and perhaps the most important one was I co-founded Updrop, which was an autonomous drug delivery service slash startup. We competed in the World Robo Olympiad. We obtained second place worldwide after qualifying. So we won first place nationally, second place worldwide um, out of, I believe, 40,000 students. So this was definitely my core activity. Um, we raised a good amount of money as well. And we were able to partner with DHL here in Costa Rica for prototyping and initial deliveries, etc. And so, yeah, essentially you can think of it as Uber Eats, but with drones. I do highly encourage you to compete in things, especially in the realm of tech. There are a ton of competitions, etc. Try to showcase yourself. Work so hard and try to try to exert uh, some sort of fun into the work that you do with some sort of big overarching goal. That was great for me in terms of motivation, in terms of everything, and the results are quite nice after that. So secondly, um, I co-founded Zindicate.app. Syndicate was an all-in-one productivity system for real-time collaboration, document editing, your calendar, scheduling, tasks, for highlighting articles, basically everything. It was sort of like a poor man's version of Notion before Notion was popular. Um, so that's what we did. Uh, we were able to obtain over 31,500 users, so a good amount of active weekly as well. Uh, we began venture capital procedures with Andreessen Horowitz and other VC firms. We were very young. This was like 14, 15 years old, my co-founder and I. Although we did scale it to a team of 15 across eight countries. So it was a pretty big deal, but definitely one of the first things I did, it was entering ninth grade, between eighth and ninth grade, going into a little bit 10th grade. Uh, and then sort of paused a little bit, came back in 11th and then stopped again. And so, yeah, that was Syndicate, which was my second largest activity. And thirdly, uh, to round out the computer slash technology section slash startups, uh, it's douche.xyz, which is essentially an open source mobile app to securely sell things to your friends. It's targeted towards Gen Z, et cetera. All links in the description, won't spend too much time on this. 5,000 people in the wait list. Uh, you know, I received uh, financing from 1517 Fund, which is a US-based venture capital firm. And yes, currently in Bayer, so still in progress. Then I was president for the Mu Alpha Theta, so the school is Math Honor Society. Uh, I had a job uh, the winter of my junior year, so in between semesters of junior year at Aviado, which is a burgeoning tech startup. Uh, and so I joined at a very early stage. I think we were roughly five people or so. I developed key features and it directly contributed to Aviado raising over $1.1 million in seed funding from Sequoia Capital and other well-known VC firms. So I do believe my work there was critical, especially at that early stage. And so this was sort of a big thing that I included in my college applications. The important thing about this is you want to show numbers. You want to show that impact. If you notice in every single one where I can, I'm including numbers. You know, for example, there, less than five employees, $1.1 million, et cetera. All these different things, whatever it may be, try to include numbers, try to show the impact that you're doing, right? You work so hard, showcase it. There's always probably a number that you can include. So my next, uh, activity was another paid job. First off, I was hired as a mobile engineer by an Australian company called Lemonade uh, between 10th grade and 11th grade in the summer to work on their e-commerce platform. And then the founder was very pleased with my work, etc. And so come back in summer of 23, so between 11th and 12th grade, I became co-founder with him and I was CTO of an immersive AI study assistant that catered towards the Australian HSC high school diploma, which is their equivalent of the IB slash AP, et cetera. And so we were able to sell this to an Australian educational technology conglomerate called Art of Smart for a decent amount of money. Can't disclose uh, legally, but uh, this is what I included in my application. And I feel like it does showcase how I pushed through with something. I became an employee summer 10th and 11th grade and then came back. They were obviously happy with my work, became co-founder and then saw it through towards acquisition. So you wanna show consistency as well and that you can really 
contribute to something and give your heart to any sort of initiative as cliche as it sounds you want to show that consistency and will to work on things and see them through next up uh, i played basketball heavily ninth and tenth grade before ib sort of <laughs> crashed that down uh, i was on the national team for costa rica u16 i played a few games with them uh, etc it was for a decently short amount of time only in 10th grade because i had to quit for ib in 11th grade however i was also team captain at our club here in costa rica it's called escasu it's the number one ranked youth club for basketball uh, in the country and so that was a big part of my life athletics i've continued that with running personally and going to the gym etc however in terms of competitive athletics slash varsity this is what i did the last job i had uh, and another activity that I included was in the summer of 2021. So going way, way back into between 9th and 10th grade, it was at Cloud Wallet, which was a mobile wallet to manage creator tokens and track BitCloud gains. So that was when the whole BitCloud rage was going on. Uh, and so this was not my startup. This was just a job I had. Uh, I worked in front end, etc develop cryptography, real-time encryption, a bunch of features. As you can see, I'm showing the impact, and that startup was valued at over a million dollars when I was there. And so again, I'm showing impact, showing how much I earned, etc. all these different things. You want to be sure you're doing that. And then for the final two activities, the second to last is MUN, so Model United Nations. Uh, it's a huge part of my high school career. I love it dearly, dearly, dearly. It's incredibly transformative, highly recommended, by the way. I was secretary general at our conference. It's the largest in Central America. It's held at Lincoln School. It's called LMUN. Uh, I was it twice. So I was under secretary general in 11th grade. Now this year in 12th grade, I was secretary general, which is basically like the person who runs it. Then I've also been chair, delegate, you name it, in a bunch of different conferences. I also attended Harvard MUN in 2023 in January in Boston. So I also included that. And again, showing impact, for example, eight time best delegate award in nationwide conferences, things like that. And lastly, music. So I was section leader for the woodwinds um, at our school symphonic orchestra. And then regarding piano, I composed for myself for national competitions, etc. And I'm also certified by Yamaha Japan for advanced aptitude. So I obtained the highest level possible as a student in their sort of grading system, I'll include it here. And so again, I encourage you to seek out these things. It's like, okay, I play piano really good. Allow me to showcase that. So try to look for those opportunities to really showcase it because it A, looks great on your college applications and B, allows you to really demonstrate that impact that you're creating. And that it's not just a thing that you do as a hobby, but it's also a thing that you truly love and you're dedicated to. It's not just, oh yeah, whatever, I pay, play piano. Everyone can say they play piano, but if you're able to do these sort of things, that's where you really stand out. And it's also relatively easy to do if you take things seriously. And at the same time, are relaxed and have fun, because if you have fun, you're able to excel at the things you do. And then if you excel at the things you do, you can compete and win and do all these things and be certified. And so just try to enjoy the process. That's my biggest piece of advice. And lastly, let's move on to honors. So in terms of the honors section on the Common App, there's a max of five slots. Uh, I filled them out. So the first one was the World Robo Olympia thing I was mentioning. This one was the international one. It was in 10th grade. So we won second place worldwide at the World Robot Olympiad out of 40,000 students. And I believe something like 14,000 teams. So it's definitely my biggest one. I do list them in order of relevance. So I put this one first. And then second, I put the national one, which we won first place in Costa Rica in order to qualify for the international finals. Then thirdly, I received a grant, the Medici grant from 1517 Fund, which is that US-based venture capital firm I was talking about. So I included that, that was in my senior year. So quite recently, first semester, just in time for my college apps. And then fourthly, the Yamaha Japan certification. And then lastly, pre-calculus thing I was talking about, obtained both pre-calculus and calculus one certifications from the Technical University of Costa Rica in that dual enrollment program I was talking about. And this was in both 10th and 11th grade, 11th grade for calculus. As part of the IB diploma, uh, we did this on the side. So that was my five awards. 
just to conclude, again, you've probably seen this in just about every stats video out there. However, it is incredibly subjective. I quite frankly do not know how I got in. Uh, I'm gonna read my admissions file when I get into college, obviously, because I want to find out exactly why. But at the end of the day, you have to remember it's incredibly subjective. Like I got into Yale, but got rejected from Princeton, for example. Another year, it could have been the other way around. I got into Princeton and rejected from Yale, etc. And you just gotta remember not to take things too seriously. It's not personal. You might be the greatest applicant in the world, but you don't fit the need for diversity or the role that that particular school wants you to fill, right? And so you might just get lucky, you might not. So apply broadly, I encourage you to do that. Obviously within limits, uh, if you're not aiming for Ivy League schools, don't feel pressured to apply to them. They're not the holy grail. Everyone is going to be happy probably if they apply to the right schools for them that fill their needs. So the school wants you to fill their needs and you must look for schools that fill your needs and fulfill what you want in this life. Four years is a long time. And so you want to make sure you're at the best place for you. At the end of the day, whether you go to school X, school Y or school Z, probably your life outcome is gonna be the same if you work hard and are disciplined and have fun along the way. That's the most important part. Remember to have fun, enjoy the journey, and don't take it too seriously. Have a serious mindset, but don't take things heavily enough to where it is impairing your ability to enjoy life. We all have one life and make it worth living. So I'll make a more detailed advice video later and go into my essays, things like that for every school, etc. So subscribe, like, comment. If you want to see my reaction video, I've linked it somewhere up here. It's also in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Best of luck. If you have any questions, do reach out to me and do not forget. Enjoy the journey. Have fun. Bye-bye.